How's it going everybody? So today seems like a good day to uh, start the goats education for electric fence. Got all the stuff around to uh, set it up and I've got them preoccupied with some alfalfa because under normal circumstances you wouldn't be setting up electric fence in an area that already has goats because well, they'll be in your way and wondering what you're doing and chewing on stuff. Like I just tossed in the, uh, the spool of the power tape and they decided that they were going to try to chew on the plastic on the outside so I threw in some alfalfa to keep them occupied. So let's get started. Well, I have a whole bunch of T-posts laying around from various and assorted other projects. And uh, I could have bought the uh, posts that are designed for running electric fence, but might as well use what I got. I only bought the clips, the T-post clips for run an electric fence. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cordoning off you know, a chunk of what is currently theirs so that they can learn that the electric fence is not something they want to mess with. That way here in a bit I can have them go through and clear all of this out. have a couple of things that I'm going to have to protect with some standard wire because I've got a, a hawthorn over here that I'd like to keep intact. Now they can go through and mow down all the manzanita, all the sagebrush, all the small oaks. That I don't mind. I want to keep that one hawthorn there because there's only two on property and honestly I wouldn't mind propagating them. So let's get started. So for starters I'm going to be putting a post right here right next to the fence you know a couple inches off and it's just going to be tapped into the ground a little bit. Yeah, let's give you a shot of that. It's only going to be top, tapped into the ground a little bit. So this isn't a structural fence, this is simply just a psychological deterrent. You know, under normal circumstances they would be, uh, there would be another fence beyond this, but for educational purposes I just don't want them to get past. So I'm going to be running it over there. So I'm going to grab another post and drive it over there. So what I've got here are T-post polytape insulators. These ones are also capable of holding on to the uh, wire. And for these, you go through, grab it. Let's uh, get you a better shot. Grab it, put it about where you want it. Nose is about right there. Wrap it around. Okay. 
clip it on. Holds on pretty securely and hopefully this will work as a temporary end because I don't well, I don't have the specific end pieces. Now, for the bottom wire, I'm going to put it about right there. About 12 inches off the ground. Well, let's put it a little lower. About six inches off the ground so that daffodil won't go through and just push under. So that should be low enough for daffodil to think twice. Now I'm gonna go through and do the same thing over there. And with these guys I'm going to need a three wire setup because I have three different sizes of goats. I've got Shastina who is a mature goat. I've got waffle, dump cake, and cinnamon which are you know, middle sized goats and waffles coming under to say hi. This isn't food. And then I've got Daffodil, who is a small goat. She'll end up being as big as Shastina, but as of right now, she is small. So I've got all of the clips on there that I think I'm going to need. I may be wrong. This is first time setting up electric fence for me, so it's a little bit of a learning curve. But now I'm going to run the bottom two as a uh, 14 gauge galvanized electric fence wire and with these spools if you've ever played with copper wire you think they're not that heavy trust me when I tell you these 14 gauge galvanized steel or hell, even the 17 gauge galvanized steel wire is very heavy I went to pick this up for the first time thinking, you know, I've picked up spools this big of copper wire, they're not that heavy. And I was surprised because I'm used to just sticking my finger in the hole, picking it up, throwing it in the cart. I went, stuck my finger in the hole, pulled it off the shelf, and fell right out of my hands. They're a lot heavier than they look. So, what I've done here, just looped it through locked it in, gave it a couple of spins. I'm not going to put this under a whole bunch of tension, so it doesn't need to be, you know, excellent. So I'm going to take this spool, I'm going to walk it all the way back, come up, or wrap it around, come up to the next one, and come back to here. I'm not going to pull it super tight because I'm going to be using that line to drive in a third and fourth post just so that there's a little bit more support there. And then for this top one, I'm going to do the one inch tape. And then from there, I just have to hook it up electrically and I should be done. So, I've got the two wires strung. I gotta drive a post over there. I'm gonna have to put this bottom one under some tension because right now it's just resting right on the ground. I don't really want that. And once that's done, I'll go through and run the top piece of banding, turn it on and see what they think. Now, as you can see there already, I'm trying to figure it out. Hey, hey, hey. No for a fact, but I want to get this all set up before I even try turning it on. So as of right now, 
The goats have no fear of it. They have no worry about it. They're going through, seeing if it tastes good. They're doing their normal goat stuff when it comes to new things in their area. I gotta go through tension up this bottom wire and drive in another post to keep this area kind of suspended a little bit better. And all I gotta do is hook it up, turn it on, see what they think then. So as of right now, the fence itself is set up. The wires are still really droopy. And the top wire is not electrically connected to the bottom wire. All of those things can be very easily fixed. Now, there was an old timer that taught me that if you want to tension up some fence wire, take a pair of pliers and just give it a little twist until it pulls tension. I'm going to do that on this one. I don't need a whole lot of tension. I just need just enough to keep it up off the ground. And these guys have no fear of it whatsoever. But that's about to change. I go through, grab a little bit of this. That should be sufficient. Cut it in half. And this little piece of wire will be the jumper between these two wires and the top. Then I gotta use the other wire to hook up the top of the solar because it's a solar powered fence. I hook that up so that this all works. So, for this, there's a whole bunch of horizontal wires that are electrified. So I'm going to go through. Get a couple of tight wraps around this. And I'm going to go through and wrap it down here. Now for, the, for this setup, since it's just an educational system, I don't want to drive eight foot of grounding rod into the ground for something that's going to be used for a couple of weeks. Just until they learn to respect the electric fence. I'm going to be using the fence, or the existing fence itself, as my ground rod. So I'm going to find a good point here. Let's tie it off a little closer. So that that can reach up to. Oh, no, that won't fit. Oops. I forgot that since the solar panel is on the front and all the knobs are on the front, I have to put it on the front. And the sun always comes from this side, so I have to use that. So now I'm going to be hooking up the fence to run on electricity. I want to be over on this side because I don't want to be stepping over this while it's hot because where the wires will touch, I don't want to get shocked. This is an America's or American Farmworks solar powered um, 
electric fence charger. Let's get that in the shot. It's supposed to be good for five miles. It's currently running about 70 feet, so it should be great. Just pop it open. Pull this out. This is going to be sitting right here. Full view of the sun. Got the ground hooked up. Need just a little bit more wire to get down to the fence. And then I need to turn it on. In doing the electrical hookups, it's always a good idea to bend it in half because it's a thread on nut. Now let's see if it's working. No electrical connections other than what there should be. It's clicking over. I don't know if the click is a good thing or not. Hey, Daffodil! Let's grab something that one of them will want to have. Let's see what, you, what they think. Come here. Guess it's not working. Well, I gotta do some troubleshooting. Looks like she's gonna touch it. Cinnamon over there just touched the fence with his nose. I don't think it's got that great of a charge. I might have to wait until tomorrow to see how well it works. Uh, apparently the solar panel being half covered sitting in the sun was not enough to go through and charge up the batteries. But they are already somewhat wary of it. They are all avoiding it. Could be they all have food. But Shastina isn't touching it. Cinnamon touched it with his nose and didn't like it, so I'm assuming it's working. So, we'll see. See how well this works out. Hopefully they learn over the next couple of weeks that electric fence isn't something they want to play with. That way I can go through and have them mow through all of that stuff between blackberries and raspberries and the fence. Everything all around. That way I can go through and pull up the manzanita, pull up the sagebrush. It'll be easier to get to the pines to cut them down. Once that's all done, then I have plenty more places for them to graze. I just have to set up a little bit of electric fence and they'll be good to go. Alright, y'all have fun. Bye.